Hello and welcome to United Methodist Church of Merced this, for this worship of August 9th of 2020. We welcome you into this worship space. What a glorious way for us to honor God this day as we join together in holy worship, offering our thanksgiving, our praise, our prayers, and our time together, even as we are willing to engage in the message prepared for us this day. As the body of Christ, we are bound together by the Holy Spirit, uniting us across time and space and place and working in us and through us in worship as we worship together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad you chose to worship with us this day. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And now, let us prepare to be in an attitude of worship. I invite you to take a breath, intentionally emptying yourself of all that might distract you or keep you, uh, your mind occupied in this moment, so that we can willingly and openly be fully present to the Holy Spirit and authentically present, presenting ourselves to God. May we be upheld, mind, body, and spirit, by the nurturing love of God and engage in active, fulfilling, and transformative praise, prayer, listening, and worship together. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship for this day. The response is, we give thanks for all God has done. We come to worship to celebrate and give thanks. We give thanks for all God has done. Today we watch for the new things that God is doing. We give thanks for all God has done. We offer up ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. We give thanks for all God has done. Amen. Please join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, creator of all that is, was, and is to be, we thank you for doing a new thing in our lives, in our families, in our church, and in our world, even as you are at work in us this day, through our desire to worship and praise you, be moved, filled, and directed by you, your transformative powers are making all things new. Use our time together in worship to do your will. Take our offerings, praise, thanks, and willingness to be present and changed by you as we worship. Remind us and show us you are alive and at work. And yes, you are doing a new thing in, in us. Do a new thing through us, O oh God. A new thing for us, in Jesus' name. Things shall not remain as they have been, and we have been remade you are at work. Transform us and this world. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This is what God spoke through the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And we read from the New Testament in 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's varied grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion 
forever and ever. Amen. God bless the reading, the hearing, the interpreting, and the doing of the Holy Word. If I say God is good, will you say all the time? If I say all the time, will you say God is good? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God's grace is amazing and abundant, and we can know it even when we seek perspective for the living of our days. In today's text, Peter's message was not that his readers ought to work hard to change their circumstances, as challenging as those circumstances were. His message was that they needed to work hard to change their perspective, as glorious as the gospel is. So let's talk today about perspective and its power in the midst of this pandemic and for always. Perspective is the way we look at things. Sometimes perspectives are based on values. A man headed to heaven heard, you can't take it with you, but asked if he could bring just one thing. The Lord said, no. But after many requests said, okay, one thing. The man thought about the most valuable thing and packed his suitcase full of gold. When he arrived in heaven, the Lord was curious about which one thing he chose. But looking inside the bag had to exclaim, you brought pavement? Or perspectives are based on experiences and exposures. The old parable of the blind man and the elephant is about blind men learning to conceptualize what the elephant is like by touching it. One man touched the side of the huge animal and knew it was smooth. Another put his hand on the elephant's limber trunk and declared it like a snake. A third man felt the elephant's pointed tusk and decided the creature is sharp and deadly as a spear. The fourth man touched one of the elephant's legs and said, it is an extremely large cow. The man who felt the elephant's giant ear believed the creature was like a huge fan or magic carpet. Yet the man who gave a tug on the elephant's coarse tail scoffed the elephant was nothing more than a piece of old rope. Perspective may be related to occupation. Three people were visiting the Grand Canyon, an artist, a pastor, and a cowboy. As they stood at the edge of the geological marvel, each one responded with a cry of exclamation. The artist said, oh, what a beautiful scene to paint. The minister cried, what a beautiful example of the handiwork of God. The cowboy mused, what a terrible place to lose a cow or a myriad of other positions affect perspective. A man fell into a pit and couldn't get himself out. A subjective person said, I feel for you down there. An objective person said, well, it's logical that someone would fall in. A Pharisee said, only bad people fall into pits. A mathematician calculated how he fell in. A news reporter wanted an exclusive story. A geologist told him to appreciate the pit's rock strata. And an IRS agent asked if he was paying taxes on it. An evasive person avoided the subject altogether. A self-pitying person said, you haven't seen anything till you've seen my pit. An optimist said things could get worse. A pessimist said things will get worse. Jesus, seeing the man, reached down, took him by the hand, and lifted him out of the pit. You get the point. Perspectives are unlimited. No wonder we have so many beliefs and theologies, opinions, schools of thought, contrasting views, interpretations, expectations, religions, and denominations. Even though as human beings, we are built the same, with the same types of organs, the same types of cells, and the ability to reason. 
Perspective is the way we look at things, outlook, viewpoint, stance, position, our lens through which we see the world around us. Perspective is important. Our decisions and how we live our lives are based on how we things see things. In that sense, perspective is vital. It governs our attitudes and ultimately the way things play out in life. It has been said that situation may only be 20% of living and that 80% has more to do with our attitudes or how we see and react to things. Our perspectives are formed by many things. Focus, attitudes, moods, motives, situations, experience, values, culture, preconceived notions, present circumstances, information or misinformation, and influencers. Our perspectives then inform how we respond. This can be negative and lead to out of control reactions such as road rage, excessive complaining, aggressive resentment, being overtaken with worry, oppressive depression, disappointment, expectations too low or too high, insecurity to undermine self-esteem, issues of inequality, and even the hoarding witnessed in this pandemic. Or it can be positive. Especially as a people of faith, we can be certain how we think matters to how we respond. Gratitude instead of grumbling, peace instead of distress, hope instead of hopelessness, strength, courage, security, and a true sense of being loved and of loving. These perspectives can give us a firm foundation for life and that more abundantly and creatively inspire us to move forward and make a difference in the world around us. Isn't that good news? Our faith response to perspective reminds us that we can be grounded and have direction for perspective to live life fully and to pass grace on. Let's look at how our faith helps us find firm foundation stay focused on what matters, and grow in grace, even making a difference for the world around us. The first faith response is to find a firm foundation. We've all heard the disenchanted claim, everything is relative and there is no absolute morality or truth. Of course, there's a problem with that logic. If everything is relative, then that becomes an absolute. And in a world with so many questions about where to place our perspective, it's hard to have a firm foundation. In the midst of so many choices, beliefs, and viewpoints and perspectives, it's great to know we can still be grounded. God is absolute, eternal, first cause, pure actuality, an omniscient, omnipotent, and perfect being. Knowing that can make us to know we are based in something secure and even lead us to be more open to all around us, which really is relative. Isaiah 28, 16 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am the one who has laid a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation who believes will not be in haste. With a firm foundation, we can stay focused and grow in grace and make a difference in the world around us. So second, stay focused. Though people have always had circumstances beyond control, we know we are living in a time of social media, fake news and influencers of all sorts, and that can wreak havoc on perspective. Our limited understanding can easily lead us astray. Proverbs 16:25 says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end leads to death. A refractive, refractive lens, better known as glasses, 
is an optical device that focuses or disperses light beams and allows us to see more clearly. As a person born over nine weeks prematurely, my eyes never fully developed, so I started seeing eye doctors as a toddler. Throughout my life, they have worked to help me focus and to see things more clearly. Similarly, there is a spiritual lens through which we can correct our vision, be assisted in focus, and see more clearly. We have many spiritual tools that help us with focus, prayer, meditation, worship, and Christian conferencing, to name a few. And then, of course, God's Word is so rich with focus assistance. Even though they were in some incredible predicaments, individuals of great faith in the Bible had this blessed habit of refocusing their sight on God and so gained a clearer picture of everything else. We can read accounts of those who successfully focused and those who didn't to help us see the difference. Consider two biblical personalities. The first is Jonah, you know, of Jonah and the whale fame. The prophet Jonah viewed reality through his own lens of understanding. So even after miraculous rescue from the whale, he focused on himself and became depressed to the point of lying down to die until he allowed God to work in him a renewed perspective and he could rejoice in mighty works for the people. And then there's the Apostle Paul, who says in 1 Corinthians 12 that he pleaded with the Lord to take away his thorn and then saw the bigger picture and realized that God's grace was sufficient and God's power was made perfect in the midst. Renewed perspective got him through with a positive attitude, strength that endured, and the ability to make a tremendous difference in the world around him. Our perspectives and attitudes matter, and nothing helps more than what we expose ourselves to and what we spend our time thinking about. Philippians 4.8 says, Whatever is true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there is anything of virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditating on these things focuses our attention and relieves us from a lot of other places our minds could otherwise go. This allows us to grow in grace and even thereby change the world as that grace flows out from us. So third, our faith response calls us to grow in grace and affect the world. The ominous is nothing new. Pain and struggle are certain. The death rates are a staggering 100%. It's not just the coronavirus that is mysterious. There are many things to invade our perspectives if we aren't armed for the journey. Yet there is grace for the journey and grace for the giving. Grace is unmerited favor, a gift received and a gift given, and it makes all the difference in how we live. Grace means we experience a lifting of our burdens and can live in such a way that we lift the oppression and burdens of others. Grace means we are blessed to be a blessing, that we are forgiven and forgive, we are beloved and we love, we receive mercy and are merciful and can be restored and restore others and can be grateful and overflow with gratitude. It's a journey to be sure, but we can grow in grace and affect the world. This doesn't come automatically. We have a natural tendency to view things through the lens of our own pain or other position but we also have the ability to view life through the lens of God's word and character. And when we do this, our perspective changes. We are able to see the experience more clearly and open up the possibility of taking wise action. Though our brain tends to fix our lenses on the familiar and the comfortable, 
The problem then is seeing things as black or white. Grace assists us though to keep our firm foundation and still see through different lenses, providing significant benefits. We look beyond our own experiences and become aware of how our experiences affect what we see and hear and think and believe. Lenses can reframe and transform dysfunction into graceful behavior and habits. We will have different perspectives and that's not necessarily bad. In John chapter 20, we read four eyewitness accounts of the resurrection of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Peter, John, and Thomas. So the perspectives inform a bigger picture, a broader perspective that can help us see more fully with more grace and effective witness. Although becoming Christian is in part defined by being given new sight, by being enabled to see what really is there, we don't diminish, we don't immediately receive perfect vision. Our eyes are open, but our perspective is still blurred. We see dimly this side of glory. We know it's a process. We grow in grace. In forbearance of this, for example, knowing that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope, gives us the perspective of patience and a process. Yet, wherever we are on the journey, grace makes a difference to our lives, and that overflows to all those around us. God's perspective informs us, grows us, graces us and those around us. God looks at the big picture, seeing everything in terms of relationship with us, love. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal, it says in 2 Corinthians 4.18. This side of heaven, our sight will always be impaired. Seeing through a glass dimly is our fate. But there is reason to hope that God and the mysterious work of the Spirit, that through these things our weak vision can be sharpened and enlarged, enabling us to see further than the shadowy glass in front of us. May God continually improve our vision for our own spiritual benefit and to give our fellow spiritual travelers a broader perspective too the grace of seeing with the eyes of God. Finding peace in this life and enduring trials gracefully may not be so much about changing our circumstances, making sure we're insulated, but about changing our perspectives, seeing as God sees. Where are our eyes? There's a song in the second album by then teenager Amy Grant in 1979 called My Father's Eyes that partially says, when people look inside my life, I want to hear them say, she's got her father's eyes. Eyes that find the good in things when good is not around. Eyes that find the source of help when help just can't be found. Eyes full of compassion, seeing every pain knowing what you're going through and feeling it the same, just like my father's eyes. May our perspective be God's. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, grant us eyes that see what you see, love as you love, and live in the perspective that reminds us to look up, think wider, and focus on the greater good you have for us. Guide us from stuck places, narrow views, weak responses, and trembling in the midst to higher ground and stronger, positive stances that we might live our lives more fully and overflow with your abundance that makes a difference in the world around us. Because your clarity, your security, and your guidance give us vision, <clears throat> purpose, meaning, and grace, all God's people can enthusiastically say, Amen. Amen.
What an amazing gift. What an amazing gift, privilege, and affirming act of God that we are invited to pray with and for each other today. Today's pastoral prayer will be in the form of a litany with you responding as invited. The invited response is, Christ is making all things new. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to you broken. We come to you groaning along with creation. We are pummeled by the headlines, heartsick over the divisions in our communities, befetted by the injustices we see around us. Your good creation is sick, O oh Lord, and we cry out, Christ is making all things new. We confess that the brokenness of our world is our brokenness too. We confess that too often we turn away. We confess that too often we resist the convicting work of your Holy Spirit. Christ is making all things new. We see that this country treats some better than it treats others. We see the discrepancies in access to basic resources and care. We see it is not always safe for all persons in this country. Your creation needs you, O oh Lord, and we cry out, Christ is making all things new. We see that so many sick in life transitions, grieving, fearful, and in difficult circumstances, and so we pray for healing and health for Ellen and Jim B., Lucha, Pastor Aya, Evan, Trish, Mildred, Mary, Brigida, Dugan, Hal, Jim T., and Pat's friends, and for all who are in various stages of coronavirus at this moment. And we are reminded, Christ is making all things new. We pray for your grace in responding to the difficult situations of victims of the hurricanes, Jamie H. and essential workers, Lee G., Jim, Linda, Clarice, Michelle's niece, Nancy's niece, Ernie, Ray, and Cecil, Rachel, families who struggle, immigrants caught in the middle, our church and our community, and we are reminded, Christ is making all things new. We pray for the brokenhearted in grief, especially Don, Donna, Arliss, Gwen, and family, and Laura and family, and we are reminded, Christ is making all things new. We pray in thanks for Anna R., Mary, and the 600 plus families served through the food pantry, the new jobs acquired, and your protection and health. And we are reminded, Christ is making all things new. And we offer up our prayers spoken and unspoken, even as we are reminded, Christ is making all things new. Reveal, O oh God, your sons and daughters, our siblings. May we answer the groans of creation like midwives ready to welcome a new world where the lame walk, the blind see, and the captives are set free. Your promises are good. Your promises are sure. We are reminded Christ is making all things new. Help us to see you at work in our world. Help us to see people loved by God. Fix, your, fix our eyes on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Christ is making all things new. For we are called to participate with you, O God, in the renewal of all things. We know that we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Take heart, God's people. Christ is making all things new. Amen. Hear now the benediction. Go forth now into a world that stretches our perspectives and challenges our ways. Go forth equipped with a firm foundation, the ability to stay focused on what matters and desire to grow in grace even while making a difference in the world around us. Go forth determined to see through God's eyes for perspectives that make a difference in our living and overflow into the lives of all those around us, granting us to be equipped during this time of pandemic, social unrest, and financial crises. For God is our refuge and our strength, 
for today and all the days to come. And all God's people can enthusiastically say, Amen. Amen.